Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, you will learn about zero-knowledge proofs, which are very important in cryptography. These are for instance used in authentication. We structure this video into four different parts. In the first part, you will learn what a zero-knowledge protocol or proof is. Then we will have a look at the classical CAVE example, which explains how zero-knowledge protocols and proofs work. After that, we will have a look at the fired Shamir protocol. And finally, we will do it in Crypto 2. We have a really nice simulation of a zero-knowledge protocol in Crypto 2, and we will have a look at this. What is a zero-knowledge protocol or proof? A zero-knowledge protocol or proof is a method by which one party can prove to another party that they know a value, for instance a secret key or a password, without actually revealing it. And usually we have a prover that usually is named Peggy, who knows the secret, and we have a verifier, usually named Victor, who verifies the knowledge. And as I already said in the introduction, zero-knowledge protocols are often used for authentication. And a zero-knowledge proof must satisfy three properties. The first one is completeness. That means if the statement that the prover knows the secret is true, the honest verifier will be convinced of this fact by an honest prover. Then the second property is soundness. If the statement is false, no cheating prover can convince the honest verifier that it is true, except with some very small probability. And finally, the zero knowledge. If the statement is true, no verifier learns anything other than the fact that the statement is true. He or she will not learn what the secret is with the zero knowledge protocol. Now let's have a look at the classical cave example. And the classical cave example was invented by Jean-Jacques Quiscorter. In our case, Peggy wants to prove to Victor that she knows how to open a door in a cave, but only to Victor and not to anyone else. We have here on the right side, we have our setup. This here is a cave. In the middle of the cave here, we have a door. And Peggy claims that she has the secret, maybe a key, to open the door, and she wants to prove it to Victor. Peggy and Victor are right now standing outside of the cave. In the first step, Victor waits at position 1 and sees that Peggy walks into the cave. He cannot see then if she walks to the left or to the right side here. Then Peggy walks to one of the both sides, in our example here now to three, and of course Victor cannot see where she went. Then Victor goes to position two here, where he cannot be seen by anyone outside the cave. Then he requests from Peggy to come out from one of the two sides, to th from three or two or from four. In our case, Peggy has the secret key and can open the door. If she is not on the requested site, she has to open the door using the secret, what she did here. Then Peggy comes out of the requested site and Victor can see that she walked or came out from the correct site. Of course, they will repeat this procedure n times. If Peggy does not know how to open the door, in 50% of the cases she will come out of the cave at the wrong side. Imagine she was at 3, she does not have the key, Victor says please come out from side 4 here, but of course she has not the key, then she has to come out at the side 3 here and Victor sees, okay, Peggy cannot open the door. But of course when he requested the 3 and she came out of 3, she could have stand by chance on the correct side and still does not have the key. To test or to verify that she really has the key, they have to repeat this procedure n times to reduce the probability that Peggy um, randomly or luckily choose the right side. Now let's have a look 
add an original zero knowledge protocol or real zero knowledge protocol. And we have a look at the Fiat Shamir protocol. And with the Fiat Shamir protocol, a trusted third party, which we call TTP, is required. And the protocol starts with the generation and registration of a public key with the trusted third party. How does this work? In step one, the trusted third party creates a public N, which is a product of two prime numbers. And of course, these prime numbers are very, very large prime numbers, so that, is not, that it is impossible to factorize the N. Then Peggy, who wants to register her key, chooses a secret number S, where S and N are co-prime. Then she computes the power of two, so the square of S modulo N, and registers this number, this is V, with the trusted third party. And her public key then is the V, and her secret key is the S. Now Peggy wants to prove to Victor that she knows the secret S. How does this work? And this is only a single round of the protocol. As with the case example, they have to repeat this, uh, this method here uh, until the probability that Peggy by chance gave the correct numbers <laughs> is minimal. So how does a single round in this protocol work? First, Peggy chooses a random number R and computes X, which is also the square modulo N and sends this X to Victor. Then Victor randomly chooses an E, which is either 0 or 1, and sends it to, Pe to Peggy. Peggy then computes a Y, which is the product of the random number she only knows, with her secret to the power of E modulo N, and then sends this Y to Victor. Victor then can check if the square of the Y mod N is equal to the X times V to the power of e mod n. If this statement is true, he then thinks, okay, um, this round, or in this round, Peggy gave me the correct answer. And then this round here is repeated with different random numbers uh, created by Peggy and different random e is created by Victor until Victor is satisfied that Peggy knows s. If Peggy doesn't know s in the case of E being 1, she cannot give him the correct Y, and then this equation here at the end is not true, and in this case, Victor knows that Peggy has not the secret S. And why do they perform this protocol um, R times? They perform this because Peggy wants to authenticate to Victor that she, for instance, knows the secret. Let's assume that Victor is a server. Peggy performs this protocol with the server. And after the server Victor then is convinced that Peggy knows the secret, Victor gives access to Peggy um, to some system on the server or to some application on the server. Now I have a small security discussion of this protocol. This protocol is not zero knowledge yet, since it reveals one bit of information about R mod N. And to avoid that, in the fake Fiat Shamir protocol, Peggy sends X mod N or minus X mod N to Victor. And Victor does not know if she had chosen X or minus X. And he then has to check two things. He has to check either if y square equals x times v to the power of e mod n, or if y square equals minus x times v to the power of e mod n. And if one of these two are correct, then the round, um, he accepts the round, and he accepts in this round that Peggy knows the secret. And there's also an important thing you have to do. You are not allowed to reuse the r. If the same R is used twice, and E is once zero and once one, the private key can be calculated. But since R is chosen by Peggy, she has to take care that she doesn't, or that, that she does not reuse the R. I know that this is somehow complex, how this works, and maybe you right now don't see that this works, but I have an example on the next slide. We have an example with small numbers. And in the first step, 
we have to generate and regist register public uh, or the public key with the trusted third party. The trusted third party first computes an n. It chose two very big prime numbers, in our case, of course, small prime numbers, 17 and 13. The product of these is 221. This is our modulus. Then Peggy chooses a secret number s. This is her secret key. She, she has chosen s equal to 27. And then she computed the public key, which is the power or the, the square of s. And this is 27 square modulo n, which is 66. So 66 here is her public key and 27 is her private key. Now let's play a round of this protocol between Peggy and Victor. A single round and Peggy proves that she knows the secret s. In the first step, Peggy chooses a random number, in our case 50. And she computes the x, which is r to uh, the power of 2 mod n, which is 50 square mod 221, and this is 69. Then Victor chooses randomly an e, which is either 0 or 1. In our case, e is 1. Then, of course, he sends this e to Peggy, and Peggy then computes a y, which is her random number, times her secret to the power of 1 mod n. In our case here, this is 50 times 27 modulo 221, and this is 24. And she sends the 24 to Victor. And Victor can now check if this 24 is correct by computing y to uh, square mod n equals x times v to the power of e mod n. In our case here, the y square mod n is just 24 to the uh, square mod 221. This is 134. And then he computes the other part of this equation here. This is x times v to the power of e, which is in our case 69 multiplied with 66 to the power of 1, so this is 66, modulo 221. And this again is 134. So these two numbers here are equal. And think of in a real world scenario, these would be very, very large numbers, but these would be still the same, since in our case, Peggy knows the secret. She knows the S, which belongs to the V. And now let's play a second round. We have another single round. Peggy proves that she knows the secret S. Now she had chosen R uh, as 90. So she computes R square mod N, which is 90 square mod 221, which is 144. Now. Of course, we want to have the other case where Victor has chosen E being zero, so E is zero. So Peggy computes um, R times S to the power of E, and here this E here is zero. So basically, she just reveals her secret number. Then Victor checks the Y square mod N, which is 90 square mod 221, which is 144 here. This is <laughs> this is a number that uh, um, Peggy has also sent to her, uh, sent to him. And of course, he computes x times v to the power of e. In our case, this is 144. This is the x times 1. The 66 to the power of 0 is 1, mod 221. And this is also 144. So in this case, also both numbers are the same. So we have the 1 um, case where e is 1, where Peggy has to use her secret number. And then we have the other case where Peggy has not to use her secret number because this is um, cut out of the equation with e being zero. Since they repeat this procedure with different e's and different random numbers many times, the probability that Peggy by chance gave Victor the correct number or computed it somehow or is minimal. So after n rounds, Victor is convinced that Peggy knows the secret, but of course only if she really knows the secret. Now that we know how zero-knowledge protocols and the Fike fiat charmier protocol works, we will have a look at the zero-knowledge simulation implementation that we have in Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2, and I want to show you the really nice zero-knowledge protocol implementation that we have in Cryptool 2. And this is really nice. To find it, just search in the start center, in the template section for zero.
And then you will see the zero knowledge protocol template. Just double click it. And then you have here this really nice template. I really like this. I think this was a bachelor thesis or a diploma thesis. I'm not 100% sure. This is very, a very old template in Crypto 2, but as I said, I think it's a really nice one. And I don't know if you can see everything here, so I will move everything a little to the right so that I'm not in the way of the template. And then I will describe what you can do with this template here. So first we have two components. We have the zero knowledge verifier here and we have the zero knowledge prover here. And you can select with the prover of he or she, in our case Peggy, so she knows if or if he if she knows the secret. In the first case here, she doesn't know the secret. Then we have the verifier Victor here on the left side, this component, and you can define the amount of attempts, so the amount of um, tests Victor will perform with Peggy. In our case, it's set to 10 here. And then you can define the amount of options. And this differs a little from the cave example that I have shown you in the slides, because here we have a cave with five entries. And um, Peggy walks, in, the, in our case this is B, I think, Peggy is B, walks into one of these entries, while Victor, who is A, cannot see um, where she goes. Then he goes here also to the entries and Peggy opened a door and is at the back here in this um, hallway. And then Victor asks Peggy, please come out of one of the doors. And of course, Peggy can only come out of the doors if she knows the secret how to open all of these doors. And then she and uh, Victor repeat this procedure until Victor is convinced that Peggy has the key, or if she is not able to come out of one door, then he knows that she has not the secret. And in our case, now the number of attempts that they perform is set to 10, and the number of options is set to 5, as you can see here with this picture. And when we press play here, we can see that, um, of course, um, she doesn't know the secret, and that's why Victor declined that uh, he acknowledges that she knows the secret. We can restart this any time, uh, as, as much as we want, and every time we see here with the red light that um, Victor is not convinced that Peggy has the secret. Now we can enable that Peggy knows the secret, so she has a key, and we can press play again, and then every time, since she has a key, she is able to open the virtual uh, the, the doors here and to prove to Victor that she has a key. So every time we have the green light here. In fact, this template here simulates randomly how um, Peggy goes or Peggy goes into a random door and then Victor asks or the, our zero knowledge prover asks her to come out of the door. And this only works, of course when she has the secret key. And we can also change this to the original um, example by just saying we have a cave with only two doors or two um, options here. So this would equal the example that I have shown you in um, the slides. And when we press play here, of course, when she knows the secret, um, she of course always convinces Victor that she knows the secret. And here, this is really nice, this template also computes the probability that Peggy can convince Victor um, by chance so, so that she can cheat that she has or uh, the, the secret key. And of course, when we reduce the number of attempts, in this case, in 3%, so we have here um, number of options 2 and amount of attempts 5, and with um, this setup here, in 3% of the cases, in 3% of um, playing this protocol, Peggy can convince Victor that she has a key, but she has not. And if when we even reduce this, for instance, let's, let's change the number of attempts to one. So there should be a 50 by 50 chance that Peggy can convince Victor that she knows the secret. 
And when we press play, we see the probability that has been computed is also 50% here. Now we can change that Peggy knows the secret to no. And that means in 50% of um, the executions of this workspace, Victor would be uh, convinced that Peggy knows the secret, but we know she does not know the secret. So let's press play. No, he's not convinced. <laughs> and in the second attempt, um, of course, since we have the probability of 50%, uh, he's fooled. He now thinks she has a secret. And that is why we have to repeat the protocol many times. And when we again increase the, uh, not the amount of options, the amount of attempts, when we increase this, then of course, it's very hard for Peggy to fool Victor. And I think this is a really nice template. You can play here and test zero knowledge protocols. <laughs> Let's for fun change this to one. <laughs> and if we only have one option, then of course, even that she has no secret, every time she convinces um, Victor that she can go into this one entrance and come out. Yeah. But we could also change this to 10 here. And then when we have a very small number that uh, Peggy is able, or a very small probability that Peggy is able to convince Victor she has a key. But if she has a key, then every time Victor is convinced because she's every time able to come out of the correct entrance. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I presented to you the classical zero knowledge cave example by Chris Quartier. Then I presented to you the Fike via Charmia protocol. And finally, we had a look at the nice simulation that we have in Crypto 2, where you can play with uh, our virtual zero knowledge protocol. Yeah, and I think um, if you like what I did, please give a thumbs up. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, this would be also really helpful. Please do so. And also um, check the bell icon that you are notified when I upload new videos. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.